Hey guys, I was recently asked whether rocking was a good form of exercise. I'll be honest, I didn't even know this was a thing. Uh, turns out that rocking is the technical term for walking with a weighted backpack. So I tried this out. I started in hiking gear, but with an empty rucksack. And every week I was adding five kilos of weights until I got up to 35 kilos, half my body weight. I tracked calories and heart rate, and I'll compare those values to what we see in the research. So the main question people want to know about rocking is calories burned. But to do that, you first need to consider the calories burned from regular walking with no additional weight. To do that, I'm going to use two examples, a male and a female of average height, and they're going to be my age because it's my video. You can plug these numbers into a BMR calculator. BMR is basal metabolic rate. That's the calories you burn in a day if you literally just lay on the floor for 24 hours. Next, you need to use an activity multiplier called a MET, which is a metabolic equivalent task. Like I said, BMR is equivalent to lying down, so it gets a value of one. And depending on your walking speed, you burn three to five times more calories walking than you do lying down. If you've never seen a MET table before, they are comically specific. They have activity multipliers for walking during a food shop, in a marching band, delivering mail, carrying golf clubs, and many more. But I digress. So we have our BMR, our baseline calorie burn, and our MET value, our activity multiplier. So I'm dividing BMR by the hours in a day, 24, and multiplying by one of the lower walking paces because you're going to need to maintain that pace while carrying a weight. So the values I get are 224 calories an hour for the man and 176 calories an hour for the woman. Next up, we need to add weight. Luckily, this is something that many people have tried to answer in research papers, and I've picked out five of them. So because the average weight of the subjects and the loads vary, I've switched everything to percentages. Very roughly, there appears to be a one-to-one -one relationship, meaning if you carry a load equal to 25% of your body weight, you can expect to burn 25% more calories. You might notice that this study has the smallest effect, but the eight subjects were physically fit male soldiers, so there could be some level of efficiency that builds up from their previous experience walking with a weighted pack. So taking our original examples, getting them to carry 10% of their body weight in a backpack, their calories might also increase by 10%, seeing them burn an extra 17 to 22 calories per hour. So how about my results? I use my WHOOP strap, which uses information like my heart rate alongside the height and weight that I've put into my profile to calculate a calorie burn per activity. If we were to use the other method that we've just seen with BMR, but using my stats and my faster walking speed of three and a half miles an hour, I'd be burning around 293 calories an hour. If my calorie burn went up by the same percentage as the extra weight I'm carrying, the graph would look like this, finishing up around 450 calories an hour. What I actually saw in the WHOOP data was this. Note that my walks were around 25 minutes long, so I've multiplied them out to give a calorie burn per hour. The two values I initially thought were overestimates are actually the ones that align best with the research. Though if you remove them, then the trend line itself would match the research. So there's multiple ways to interpret this. On the WHOOP podcast, they said that in general, wearables are only going to estimate calorie burn accurately to within plus or minus 10%. So if you're going to trust one of these lines, then go with the one that's based on research. My average heart rate was 102 beats per minute with no additional weight, and that rose to 123, carrying half my body weight. In the study that used soldiers, their respective values were 95 and 121, so quite similar. The trend, as you'd expect, is for average heart rate to go up with extra weight. I don't know about you, but I was expecting this value to be a lot higher just based on how physically tiring it feels to carry something that heavy. As part of my results, I'd also like to mention injuries. I found walking with five and 10 kilos on my back very easy, but by the time I got up to 20 kilos, I was getting knee pain and lower back problems, meaning I had to focus more on posture while I was walking and also do a brief warm up before I started. I found an article quoting strength coach Dan John, who said that above 15 kilos and your body will start to break down, which aligns with my experience. Others have said that for most people, it's best not to go above a third of your body weight, which for me would be 23 kilos. At 25 and 30 kilos, I was having to brace my abs quite a lot and it was generally quite uncomfortable. And at 35 kilos, I actually strained the arch of my foot, which I'm still struggling with two weeks later. 
So in conclusion, if you're rucking for fat loss, you can expect to burn up to 10% more calories for an additional 10% in weight. Be aware that the weight should be close to your body and not moving around too much to limit the risk of injury. Online retailers sell rucking plates for exactly that purpose. They fit nicely up against your spine and also leave room in the bag to carry other things. Personally, I prefer keeping it simple. Another way to burn 10% more calories would simply be to walk faster. In one of my fat loss videos, I introduced brisk walking for 30 minutes several times a week. And the bonus there is that you're not unnecessarily loading up your spine. If you're rocking for conditioning and strength endurance, you might not see much progress with only 10% of your body weight. In my experience, I didn't even notice that was on my back. If you are going to increase the weight, then please do so steadily and with attention being paid to correct posture and also being aware of the potential to develop injuries from overuse. Thanks for watching.